guys, welcome back to Comfort Cooking with Ariana. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you, love you, love you. We're gonna do baked macaroni and cheese. This this video in particular is for my nephew Jay. The child loves mac and cheese. And every time he would see me, and this is exactly how I said, Auntie Tanti. You gonna make some macaroni and cheese? I'm like, okay, Jay, just for you, I'm gonna make some macaroni and cheese. And I have to admit, I make pretty damn good macaroni and cheese. Um, but it's not just macaroni and cheese, though. It's it's like a baked ooey gooey goodness. Yeah, <laughs> it is pretty damn good. Um, so for Jay, love you. Hey, your auntie told you making some baked macaroni and cheese. So. We're gonna get ready, and if you don't subscribe, okay. We're gonna start about four tablespoons of um, butter, and you're gonna just melt that down. You're not gonna brown it though. Again, brown butter is good. It has its place though, and in baked macaroni and cheese, not the place. Um, a lot of dishes, browned butter is not the place for it. It changes the flavor combination. It becomes a nutty flavor. Um, so don't brown it. You don't want to fry your butter. But you're going to take about one onion and you're going to slice it real thin because even for the people who don't like onions, they can't tell I have onions in there. I mean, I'm slicing these bad boys so thin. It's like super thin. I'm going to do the whole onion that way. And then I'm going to sweat them. You know, like that CC. Everybody sweat now. Dun, 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 dun. Feel the music. Anyway. I thought it's everybody dance now. You know what? Nobody asked you for your two cents. It's my story. I think it is everybody dance now. They did come up. Wanna make you sweat? Baby. Yeah, it was sweat. So slice that real thin. No. Keep an eye on your butter. It was everybody dance now. But the song was named Sweat, wasn't it? I don't know. We're gonna have to Google it. Google it! Alright, you're gonna do the same to the second half. You're just gonna slice that real thin. Because a lot of people will tell you they don't like onions. I have learned they don't like the sulfur. But when it's sliced real thin, and everybody knows, once the onion's cooked, you barely taste it anyway unless it's a caramelized onion. But, um, you're just going to slice it real thin. Is that what they taught you in culinary school? I wish I'd gone to culinary school. <laughs> I didn't. Julia Child taught me this. Or maybe it was uh, the frugal gourmet, Jeff Smith. Those were my idols growing up. You just keep chopping until it's super, super small. Get all those. Now, we don't mind onions in this house. But for those of you that do, cut it real small. Don't leave your onions chopped chunky. I don't know any onion lover that says, oh, give me a big ass wedge. I mean, do you have to have onions in it? You don't have to, but it does add to the flavor. Right. When your butter is melted, add your, like, it's melted. I don't need to do anything now, but add my onion. And like I said, you're going to sweat it. I have water boiling over there, or it should be boiling. I just made a mess. It should be boiling for uh, the macaroni and cheese to go in. So now that you have your onion in there, this is a me thing. I do put a bay leaf, a dried bay leaf. You don't want the bay leaf crumbles. You just want the dried bay leaf to go in there, okay? Now what the hell does a bay leaf do? It does give a, a, a woody flavor. Like a rosemary is woody for lack of a better way of putting it. 
I do kind of bury it under the onions. And what I do is I just sweat that out, okay? Because in about five minutes here, I'm gonna add the rest of my stuff for my sauce. Macaroni. The water's boiling. Throw a box, which is about 16 ounces of macaroni noodles in there. That's it. so they don't stick. I did not salt my water. Um, I don't want my noodles coming out very salty. The cheese you're going to have is salted. Your uh, gravy is salted. You don't need an extra element of salt by salting your noodles because that's really all it does. It, it doesn't do anything like make it boil faster. It just seasons the noodles but because everything surrounding the noodles is seasoned and the macaroni by nature has a hole in it it captures sauce when you kind of mix it together you don't need that much salt take care of your blood pressure oh i forgot to hit record no you didn't just kidding sucker you wouldn't have sat there like <laughs> waiting for a response just continue to uh sweat it out that's probably the most time consuming aspect is that on, of it. That's on almost high? It is on high. Okay. Now let me, I'll clean up my station a little bit actually because I don't need this anymore. I do need my spatula. Okay. Oh, you know what? I lied to you. I lied. I need my cutting board. Because while my uh, onions are sweating, and my bay leaf is giving off its, you know, woodiness. <laughs> it, it's a it, it's a flavor I can't describe, like rosemary. It just it's. So you get the sweaty earthy. wood. It's like a sweaty wood. No, Eric. No, it's earthy. Let's use that one. I'm gonna use about 16 ounces of cheese. I use. About 16? Well, what the black say? It's 8 ounces. So you're going to use 2 8 ounces, so not about. Depends, depends. I may not use all the cheese. But you probably will. I may not. But I may. I'm going to shred up 16 ounces of cheese. I do use a combination of cheeses. I use, sometimes I use extra sharp, sometimes I use extra sharp and sharp, sometimes I use mild and sharp these are all cheddars sometimes like today i'm using medium sharp and just a regular sharp they each have a different flavor and they they all have different melting tendencies so i'm going to shred these out uh blocks of cheese up don't let anybody shred your cheese really it's kind of it's easier cheaper to shred it yourself and you know i wouldn't say easier yeah, it's not really easier, but it takes like five seconds to shred up some cheese. And it's not really that much cheaper. You might save, what, a dime? No. I can get a block of cheese cents. for a dollar thirty-nine, but if I got a bag of shredded, it's like two dollars and thirty-nine cents. Depends on where you go. No, that's why people only get, ever really get them on sale. Look at Sargento. Look at, you know, even Lucerne here. In so now that our cheese is shredded up, our onions are sweating. I'm gonna start making what essentially, <laughs> how you like that ear, um, what essentially is gonna become a root. And I will measure this out. Most of the time I don't really have measurements. I'm gonna use about three tablespoons of flour. You want it even, uh, you want it leveled as much as possible. Get your flour in there. And then stir that raw flour up. I say that because I never noticed that on the package of flour it says flour is raw. I mean, I, always, I guess I always knew that. Once you're sure that your flour is combined, You're gonna lower your heat just a little bit. Okay? 
because to that, my friends and my family and my audience, yes, we're going to add about a tablespoon of paprika. Our macaroni is doing good. You're still, you still have it on the heat. The heat's just low. Okay, you want to get that flour flavor out. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna do about a tablespoon of dried mustard. You can do more. I might add a little bit more. You're gonna add about. Two teaspoons of, well, one teaspoon to start of cayenne. Now you're going to move relatively fast. Three cups of milk. Doesn't matter if it's whole milk, soy, uh, whole milk, half, 2%, 1%. Could you use soy? As long as it's not sweetened. You know, most people get soy that has vanilla flavor. Make sure it's plain. You can use soy. I have learned, though, people who are lactose intolerant can't eat macaroni and cheese. They can't gorge on it, but they can eat it. Um, I don't know why. But they can definitely eat the macaroni and cheese. And I'm going to stir that up. I might add, I've already taken the bay leaf out. Once it's, once it's given off its oils and its essential essence, the essence of bay, um, take it out. You don't want it in your food. You're going to stir this up for a little bit and agitate it. This is your gravy, essentially. Okay? Let it do its thing. You're going to take your heat back up to about... Hi. You're going to concentrate again. Now you're going to go back to your noodles. Concentrate again. Now you're going to go back to your noodles. You're going to go back to your noodles. Now you're going to focus your attention on your noodles. You don't want them overly done, but you don't want them underdone. Because you're going to bake it at 350. But you're only going to bake it for about a half an hour. You're going to bake it just long enough. So what, just a little bit past el dente? Yeah. Just a little bit. Alright. We like to drop things around here. I sure do. Clean up as you go. Drop it like it's hot. <laughs> Clean up as you go. I gotta taste that. I don't want to add the salt yet. And the reason why I don't want to add the salt is because it's going to make it take longer for it to, you know, start thickening and getting to temp. But once it does, I'm going to add about a tablespoon, a half a tablespoon of salt, depending upon how much salt you like. You do you. Your noodles, um, my noodles need about, I don't know, maybe three more minutes and then those will be done. You can leave the uh, lid on it. It does help it boil. That does help it boil faster, leaving it in the lid. Because you, you trap all the heat. This way it just releases and it's cooling simultaneously. Now, you want to stir it because everything was kind of... You could have made a ball out of your onion and your, um, your uh, flour at first. So you want to make sure there are no more clumps in there. So give it some agitation. You don't want to be rough with it. But you want to make sure it separates. Leave it alone. Alright, let's get our noodles. I'm, I'm going to dump my noodles and uh, I'm going to shock them. So for this particular recipe, you do want to shock your noodles because you want it to finish cooking in the oven in the the cheese gravy that we're gonna make, but um, the cheese sauce. But if you if you let if you don't shock them, then they're gonna continue to cook and they're gonna get beyond that that firm texture that you want. So I will be back. All right. So I have one egg 
and I just kind of scrambled up in the um, the noodles. I'm going to make sure that I do that. That's up. It helps bind it. It does. Our cheese. But you cooled the noodles so it's not like it's going to cook the egg. No. Because you don't want scrambled egg chunks in there. No. But when I get ready to add my cheese sauce, I'll show you that. Okay? So just make sure it's stirred up. Our gravy is coming along. This is about, I don't know, nectar consistency. That's where you want it. You can actually lower the heat now because we're going to add some cheese. You don't want to add all your cheese at once. I usually add about a handful or so at a time. And then I stir that in. But I want to make sure that that's melted because um, I don't want I don't want uneven gravy. Take that last little bit of cheese and you're not going to add it to your gravy. Okay? That's okay. going to go on top. I'll say so you can sprinkle it on top when it bakes? Yes. Mmm. -hmm. Cheese. You're going to make sure, like I said, you're going to make sure it's all stirred up and melted. Now we have to start adding our salt because now your cheese is in there. There is a salt factor. You can add more pepper if you like. I find that if I add the cayenne, I don't need to add more. The cayenne gives it a nice kick and it has a different flavor profile than white or black pepper. All right. with a T. My middle name begins with an A. Ariana. But my first name begins with a T. So I thought, how cute! Let's put the T in front of Auntie and they can call me Tati. No, those little people had something totally different in mind. They started calling me Auntie Tati. Kind of defeated the whole purpose. I'm going to add about a half a... Uh, a little bit more salt. A little teaspoon more. And that should be perfect. You do want it salted because you don't want it salted, but you want it salted because you don't want to go through all of this baking, prepping, doing all of this wonderful stuff. And then you have bland mac and cheese. That's so not good. Not where you want to be. That is gorgeous. And one more. One more taste. I'm going to add just a tad more. So what I ended up adding was about two tablespoons of uh, salt. Okay. So now that that's done, That's great by the camera. That's gonna be loud. Now that that's done, I'm gonna add all of that 
wonderful mac and cheese gravy to my noodles. I'm going to stir that in. Stir it like you mean it. Stir it like it's hot. Stir it like it's hot. Once I got everything stirred in, make sure I have, you know, I stir it a lot because I want the sauce to get into the middle of the noodle. You know, I want some of that delicious flavor to be inside. So by agitating it a little bit more, I make sure of that. Now, the, you're only going to cook it for about 30 minutes to brown the breadcrumbs, brown the top, that egg that's in there. That's basically all you're doing is cooking that egg that you can just place in there to help bind it. I'm going to pour it in my uh, casserole dish. And uh, then we're going to go back to I told you I use a lot of panko. That is like my favorite go-to breadcrumb. This is completely optional. I like doing it this way though. And I just sprinkle the top with some more of that cheddar. So you know what? I'll give the man his victory. I did use all my cheese. Can't go wrong with cheese. Damn. Good. But you can't go wrong when you have an oopsie. It's a good catch. I know. Sprinkle your top. You don't you don't want it so bready up top because it really doesn't stick beyond the first couple it's not like it's going to be a well-formed crust. It's not going to stick, but it does add a dimensional texture. So I think I may have used like a half a cup. Now we're going to stick it in the oven for about half an hour. And I'll see you in 30 minutes. And we're going to... a half an hour, so yep. And then we're going to eat. So our mac and cheese is done. We're going to pull it out. Have a look. Just over here. I was just gonna bring it to you. They're baked macaroni and cheese. 30 to 40 minutes in the oven at 350 degrees. And that's what you're gonna be left with this beautiful baked mac and cheese. So we're gonna taste this and then we're gonna eat in this house. Oh, you should hear it whoosh, 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 cutting through that bread crust. Delicious. Yeah, I can't get the. Alright, you ready to taste the air? Of course I am. Of course. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna tear that up. <laughs> That's really good. That's on point. It is on point. It's like really. All right. So, <clears throat> mac and cheese. Everybody likes it, but this is for my nephew. So I love you, Jay. Your auntie Tauntie made you some mac and cheese. And I do want to say this. I have been getting so much feedback from everyone, encouraging me, thanking me sharing their thoughts i love it because without you i wouldn't be able to do this I, if there was just one person watching i'm always surprised at my growth and it's steady and it's it's hard but it's steady and it's interacting with people and i cannot thank you enough for watching my videos so i love you all i really really truly appreciate it but getting back to the business here 
I'm going to leave a list of the ingredients in the description bar below. Now, you know this drill. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more, turn on those notifications because I'm always cooking. I'm usually good about putting two, to two videos out a week. So, until next time, happy eating.